What's going on folks? I'm Andy, I play games. Let's get into this guide here on how to level from 1 to 99 in Final Fantasy XI. And from what I can tell is the quickest way possible and most efficient possible, some combination of that to get a character from 1 to 99. Now you may be leveling this character um, just because you're starting out new in the game. If you're brand new, take a look at my absolute basic starting guide. If you're a returning player, but starting a fresh character, this guide might be for you. You're already a little bit familiar with where everything is, and you just need to get into the end game as soon as possible, so this guide will help you get from 1 to 99 efficiently and quickly. Now, here are some starting tips. First, whenever you come across a home point or a survival guide, grab it. Absolutely grab it. If you have to go 30 seconds out of your way to grab it, it's probably worth it. If you have to go five minutes out of your way, maybe it's not worth it. Take that into account. Next, remember to get Signet right away. Getting Signet right away will allow you to start building up campaign points, which you will probably want to use for your Emperor's Band and for your Warp Ring. That will cost you a total of 7,000 points, which actually comes pretty quick these days. So, Signet, Emperor's Band, home, uh, Warp Ring. Also, if this is a mule and you have a main character that has some gill, go ahead and send some gill from your main character to this mule to speed up the process. If you have any low-level gear that's a little bit harder to find, that you just want to have some fun with and kind of experience the old days uh, when you're leveling characters, send that, send that with you too. Also, if you have an E-Chad ring on your main character or another mule, maybe this is the second mule you're leveling, if you have any E-Chad rings, those are the uh, level 1 30k XP 150% bonus rings. You can send those to another character on the same account. So what you can do, any, any character that has them on your account, you can send all of them to this mule, to this brand new mule that you're leveling. And you can have a bunch of them saved up in your inventory, or sorry, your uh, delivery box. Now you can only hold one at a time, so you can take one out of the delivery box step out of your mog house, use it, go back into your mog house, send that uh, e-chad ring to yourself, take another fresh one out and have two uses to use back to back for this e-chad ring. Super useful tool if you happen to have extras if this is not the very first character. Also e-chad rings are obtainable uh, under special circumstances. There's an item, I think it's a red mog pell that you trade to a not the greeter moogle, festive moogle, that's what it is. The festive moogle in towns uh, will accept these red mog pels and you can get each chat rings. Also, the anniversary is coming up in just a few days here, if you're watching this right around mid-May. And they'll probably be giving out free anniversary rings too. So I'm going to personally go log on to all my characters and make sure they all get anniversary rings, even though a lot of them are already leveled up for the same reason that I'm leveling up a new character here that I'll show you. So next, purchase weapons all the way up uh, to level 98 or so um, with Sparks. Sparks of Eminence, uh, sorry, Records of Eminence is a quest line that I'll go over. And it's just a series of quests and you get a bunch of bonuses like gill and experience points to level up fast and these sparks which is currency that you can use to get weapons and armor. The weapons go all the way from 1 to 99 or so, um, but I would recommend not getting them for every single level. I would recommend maybe getting a new weapon every 5 or 10 levels because you'll be leveling a lot pretty fast, especially if you have a current X, uh, XP bonus campaign that's going on right now at the anniversary. Those levels will come very fast and it'll be kind of a waste of sparks to use that weapon for like one or two kills. So, also the armor for that, uh, for records of eminence sparks, the armor only goes up to level 50 or so. I guess they kind of figure you're going to get your uh, artifact equipment around level 50, so they stop giving you free, well, not free, but sparks armor um, up until level 50. I would go ahead and as soon as you start getting some sparks, buy some weapons from maybe 1 to level 20 and then gear uh, armor from 1 to level 20, and then that'll really carry you into quite a bit farther. Um, any extra sparks you have should be used to buy Acheron shields for lots of free gill. Free gill. Uh, those Acheron shields are in the 71 to 98 page of the 
Records of Eminence uh, NPC, and they sell for 27 something uh, sparks, but they sell on, at an NPC. Those Acheron shields can be sold at NPC for like 27, 26k gil. So that's a uh, I mean, that's like an end game way of making guild right there. So definitely do that. Some other quick recommendations here. A little bit of a trick when you're leveling up and, and, and doing your limit break quests. If you cap out your current level, say you are level uh, 50 and you are able to do the first limit break quest, you can do that first limit break quest at level 50. But if you uh, grab the quest when you hit level 50, go out and do the do the quest, bring the items back. If you have your XP capped at 50.999, you turn in uh, you turn in those items, and suddenly you become a level 55 cap. Then you can complete a Records of Eminence quest immediately, right there, to immediately go over that level 50 and go into 51 and start the next quest right away. So it is a way to uh, to not have to go back to town as often. So cap out your current level, then complete the current limit break quest, then immediately level up with the current Records of Eminence quest to put you into the next level, then activate the next quest, then do the next one right away. You can see it right there. I'm just reading. I over explain sometimes. Pardon me. Please like, comment, subscribe. And it will save you travel. So, and also give you like a 10 level window in some cases to not have to go back to town. You can continue leveling uh, up to like 10 levels at a time instead of 5 levels at a time. Also, check on the availability of limited time trusts. Uh, there are some trusts that are only available during certain campaigns, such as um, uh, Kultada. Kultada is a Corsair NPC, a Corsair, Corsair trust that will actually give you Corsair's role if you have a XP status effect on. Shantoto 2 also is one of the best trusts you can get. She will close skill chains and double magic burst with two quick level one spells that do huge damage. She'll magic burst on them and she'll just speed up your leveling quite a bit. She is available right now during this May login campaign. So if you're watching this soon after this video comes out, you'll be able to take advantage of that. The Kupo Free Trust is a Geomancer type trust that will just give you an XP bonus just for having him existing in your party. He doesn't do anything, he doesn't die, you can't be hurt, he just exists there to give you the free XP and capacity points by the way. He's a little bit harder to find because it's uh, rare for his availability to be around, but I have a feeling he's going to be available uh, during this anniversary campaign. I have a feeling, I'm not sure though. All will help greatly with leveling. Here are some recommended leveling locations. 1 to 10 starting zones, obviously. 10 to 20 crag zones while getting your records, Repsies of Vanadil quest items. I'll go over that in the more detailed section of this quick guide. 20 to 30 Kufim Island. It is pronounced Kufim, by the way. I don't care what you say, it's Kufim. 30 to 40, I would recommend Garelidge Citadel uh, before the first Vanishing Gate. Uh, those those uh, siege bats and boar beetles are just about right. They may be a little bit tough at 30, depending on what job you choose. If you're a mage, you can go in there and do some damage right away. But your accuracy might be a little bit a uh, little bit low at level 30 if you're a melee job. 32 is probably fine. Um, 33 for sure. So I'd recommend around 30 to 40 going into the Gaelic Citadel before the first banishing gate. Once you hit 40, or when you're really close to 40, go past the first Banishing Gate and level up on Citadel Bats. And then around level 48 or so, uh, you might want to go to Funnel Bats, which are a little bit uh, a little bit beyond that first uh, square section of the uh, beyond the first Banishing Gate. If you don't, if you're familiar with the zone, you know what I mean. Then go to Funnel Bats till about level 50. Now, once you get to level 50, you're going to want to start doing your limit break quests. I'll get into that too. Uh, 50 to 60, I recommend um, in Eshka Zita, which is a, uh, a zone that will be unlocked through this process of, uh, of in this guide. Eshka Zita uh, weapons and dommels. Um, they are pretty close to the entrance. It's just a, a 30 seconds or a minute uh, run. 
um, Ashkazita and Weapons and Dommels to level 60. 60 to 70, you probably want to do Birds, Skeletons, and Courses, also not too far away from the beginning. 70 to mid 80s or so, 82, 83 ish, you'll want to do Ashkazita also. Uh, all the, the those green flower pot things, I forget what the family is called. They're obviously plants, they look crazy looking flowers. Uh, those flowers, the gurus, and the bees in that area till around low to mid 80s. And once you are done with that, you might think that uh, the mid to low 80s will be too early for blanched mandragoras and Czak battlegrounds, but your trusts are going to be capped with accuracy when you call them at the appropriate level. When you call them at that level, they'll be fine, especially if you're a mage, uh, you'll be able to hit and do some damage. It might take you a little, you know, a little bit to kill them at first, but you'll, you'll, the XP will be so good then you'll level up quick. And that will take you all the way to 99. So it's really, it doesn't require any, uh, of the early expansions, the, um, the only expansion is the the latest one, and that's an easy one. It's just a, a minor uh, quest that you can do uh, while taking while going through this guide. Okay, let's get into the meat of this guide here. I'm going to go step by step uh, and try to go relatively quickly. Once again, if you want a very detailed guide, wait for my more thorough step by step live guide. I'm going to put those out here in maybe a couple days um, and you'll be able to see a detailed breakdown of me actually, the footage of me actually leveling up through the whole thing. So first you're going to want to go to your Records of Eminence uh, NPC in town, whatever you start. In Bastok it's Isakoth, Sandoria is Roland Dien, Windurst it's Flem, Felm, Jobizat. I always have a hard time with that. Film, Joby's at. And you'll see here are the zones that they are and the locations that they are. You'll first want to set the Records of Eminence objective in your, it'll be like the under the tutorial, the first objective you'll be able to do is that. And then once that is set, you'll talk to the person, you'll complete the, uh, complete the little quest, and then you'll be on your way. So once you do have access to a, a bigger list of records of eminence objectives, you're going to want to set as many reasonable ones as you can. You don't want to set every single one that you see because you have a limited amount of space and some of them you can't even do right now anyway. So you want to set, you want to fill up your list with all the reasonable ones that you expect to be able to use. There are ones that are kind of global, the combat ones that are global. It means like a uh, kill one enemy and then like uh, do this amount of damage and then do this amount of kills and then do the next level amount of damage. All the ones that are reasonable like early on, you're going to want to set as many as possible that are realistically obtainable right now. Um, one uh, good way to go is setting all the crystal ones. Uh, so you can get a thousand XP if you collect 10 crystals of a certain type. You just select all those and then you don't have to worry about it. Every time you get 10 crystals of a certain type, you'll get a thousand XP for free. And there you go. Once you hit level five, either by going outside or just doing some records of evidence quests, you'll want to go talk to your trust NPC, which is whatever whatever town you're in, Clarion Star, Gondabaud, Waitata. Those are the ones that start the um, trust quests. They will initially uh, start the quest and they'll tell you to go to a certain NPC and those NPCs are going to be uh, usually in like the sort of like the capital area of town uh, for Bastok is going to be in the metalworks. It's it's uh, Naji for um, Sandoria, I believe it is Exit Meal in northern Sandoria. Exit, I think it's Exit Meal. Maybe it's Halver, but you can see um, on the it'll, it'll tell you where to go. And for Winders, it's going to be Kupipi in Heaven's Tower. And get you, so you'll want to do those quests and get your trusts going as soon as possible. Now, once you do the first trust, once you complete that first quest and get your key item for that quest, you'll be able to see in your Records of Eminence menu that there is a, a new quest that shows up saying, uh, uh, call a trust. And once you do, the reward will be a trust cipher. And you go and trade that cipher to one of these starting NPCs here, and then they will, you'll be able to call that trust. And then the next quest will, will, see, will show call that one you just got and then it'll give you another cipher and then it'll go until you have about uh, six different trusts uh, once you have those six trusts there's a good chance you're already at 10 records of eminence quests completed 
once you are, you can move on to this Unity here. Now the Unity ones are special uh, NPCs that are related to Records of Eminence, but they are kind of a, a different, uh, like a subset of Records of Eminence. It's uh, Igsley in Bestock Markets, Urbio Lane in Southern Sandoria, Teldro Kestrodo in Windurst Woods, and they're usually, they're always actually right pretty much next to or in the same vicinity as your uh, as your Records of Eminence uh, quest person, Isakoth, Rolandian, Felm, Jobizet. You'll obtain access to this special trust at 5,000 Unity Accolades. So you'll want to start doing uh, the Records of Eminence quests in the, under the Unity category to start accumulating those. I would recommend, unless you are a white mage yourself and plan to play white mage appropriately, I would recommend choosing Aparuru and she, I think it's a she, is a Taru Taru white mage that will, she's pretty much the best trust out there, I think. Um, a lot of people agree, but some people may not. I think she's the best trust out there. She's just an awesome white mage and she'll keep you alive unless you totally abuse her. Um, so if you're anything but a white mage, if you're anything but a job that doesn't want a main heal, I would choose Aparuru. Also, uh, once you have your unity set and have chosen your unity leader, um, I think that's when you get access to, access to Unity Warping, and you can use the accolades that you obtain by, uh, I think it's about a, a hundred or so, to warp around the world. And you don't have to walk to places anymore these days. Not only do you have survival guides and home points, you can also use the Unity Warps to go to just about anywhere around the world, or at least get really, really close. So. If there's some place you want to go and they don't have the home point or the survival guide, there's probably a Unity Warp that's pretty close to it. So take a look at those and you'll save yourself a lot of time. So at this point you might be level 6 or level 7 or so and you'll want to go outside and level up to level about level 10 in uh, in your outside zone, either north or south Gusterberg, east or west Ronfar, or east or west Saruda Baruda. Saruda Baruda. Um, but what you'll want to do, you don't want to stay right around your uh, the home base there in level to 10. What you want to do is probably make your way to the next zone and get to level 10 by the time you get to the next zone. Maybe you'll be 11, maybe you'll be 9. It should be fine. The next zone is going to be your crag zones, which are Konstant Highlands, Lathane Plateau, Tarongi Canyon. Now, here's where you'll want to kind of multitask. You want to uh, go to, um, when it comes to Konstant Highlands, you want to go to around the Crag of Dem, which is the big, white, crazy-looking building, and kill uh, huge wasps right, right around there. You need to obtain three bee pollens. Uh, those bee pollens will help you in the quest that's uh, like the next step of the whole uh, leveling process to speed up everything. These th um, three bee pollens for Concha Highlands, for example, will allow you to skip the whole process of unlocking your subjob with the normal process is to get three rarer items. You have to find them, you have to kill them, and maybe get the drop. With three bee pollens, you just basically get to skip those, the farming of those items, which are harder to come by. And they're also going to be higher level and a little bit harder to solo. You'll want to get to level 18 or so, and while while you are getting your three bee pollens in the case of Constant Highlands, when it comes to Lothane Plateau, it is also uh, three bee pollens, but the bees are not directly right around the, the crag of Hala. The the bees that you'll that you'll find are they seem to be in the chasms or around the chasms. Um, not all of them though. There, I know there's some for sure in the uh, northeastern chasm of the map of Lothane Plateau, and there's some other ones uh, various places. But there's a lot less spawn points for the huge wasps in Lothane Plateau compared to Konstant Highlands. It might even be worth taking a trip um, to Konstant Highlands, but you know, if you can't find any bees in the Lothane Plateau. When it comes to Tarangi Canyon, that's pretty easy. The Mandragoras in the area drop uh, Mandragora dewdrops, and those are pretty self-explanatory. You can just get those from any Mandragora. There's plenty around the Crag of Mia, but there's also other Mandragora in other areas. So by the time you get those, there's a good chance you'll already be level 18. And once you do, you'll want to head to Selbina for uh, Bastok or Sandoria, and Mahora for Windurst. Once inside, you'll 
you get all, you'll get automatically get a cutscene that starts uh, the next records of uh, Rhapsody's of Anadale mission, and you'll want to go to the town's mayor, or so wherever it, uh, it should tell you in the text there um, exactly where they are. You'll want to trade the uh, three items you got from the previous section, and you'll want to trade those to um, whatever NPC it tells you to go trade them to, and you'll get in reward, you'll get a letter from Gilgamesh. That letter from Gilgamesh can be used to um, automatically finish your uh, sub job in that same in that same zone in that same town. So that that way your sub job will already be done. Also, you want to make sure that you check out. There's a NPC next to a little boat, and now that little boat gives you a free ride to a Norg. Norg is one of the uh, other minor towns in the world that you need to get to to progress farther in several missions in the game, including ones that will be crucial for this leveling guide. So you want to make sure you go use that, uh, that tiny boat, talk to the NBC next to the tiny boat, and you'll go to uh, Norg, grab the home point and the survival guide, and then you can also uh, go and do the quest there and talk to Gilgamesh there while you're there. Oh, by the way, before you go to Nork, I would make sure you get the home point in Selbina or Mora so you can go back there quickly. All right, also at this point, it might be a good idea to warp from Nork back to your home nation and then go to the Unity Warp NPC and warp to as close as possible as you can get to Juno. Juno is going to be the next step. You're going to want to uh, get to Juno and be about level 20. Uh, if you happen to be from Windurst, you can stop around uh, the northern north uh, western section of Marifatad Mountains and kill uh, crane flies. Those crane flies will drop the gauzebit wildgrass. Those gauzebit wildgrasses will be used for the chocobo license quest later on in a, in a few minutes here actually. So it may be wise if you don't have any money, if you're from Bastok and Sandoria, to get to Juno and then go out through Soramog campaign and then down to Marifatad Mountains and farm up those uh, those crane flies. So now you're in Juno and you need to unlock your Chocobo quest. You need to unlock your Chocobo license by doing the Chocobo quest. But before you do that, stop in Lower Juno. In Lower Juno, across from the auction house is a little building. And that little building will have a couple different NPCs. And one will start your Adeline access, Adelin, uh expansion access quest. You want to go ahead and talk to her. And then you'll also want to talk to the NPC next to her and buy a, uh, a map for the Juno area. That'll come in, that'll be required in a few minutes here. Then take a trip to Upper Juno. In Upper Juno down in the, uh, in the sort of uh, the Chocobo Ranch area down there, you'll uh, talk to Brutus. You might need to talk to him a couple times. You're going to want to take these four wild gauzebit grasses, and once you accept the quest from Brutus, you'll want to trade them to the chocobo right nearby. Now, this uh, particular quest, uh, you have to wait one minute in between trades, or else it'll be like you're trying to feed the chocobo too much. You have to trade six times, waiting a minute in between each one, and the first couple of times, the chocobo won't accept your gauzebit grass. But that, after the third time and beyond they'll start accepting it so you need to have four wild cosmic grasses by the way if you do have money you can just purchase them from the auction house at the moment at least on my server they're about 10k each so if that's worth it to you then go for it uh, otherwise go farm them up from crane flies in marifa todd mountains so now you'll be able to start the mount quest grab the mount quest from mappy toto over here um, he will uh, mark a bunch of spots on your map that will show you where you need to stop with your raptor once you, the mini game starts. So you just go around with your, take a look on bg-wiki or watch my extended guide to explain to you thoroughly how to uh, finish that raptor, that raptor mount quest. So now that you have your raptor, here's a, a very important part of the game. This is making your mount macro. Now you might be thinking I need to make a macro to mount and I might need to make a macro to unmount your mount so you can jump on and jump off at a moment's notice whenever you need to escape danger or just speed up and you want to create a macro to get on your mount so you don't have to go in the menu every time however i know of a way to do it in the exact same macro so you don't have to go back and forth and accidentally hop off or accidentally hop on it this one macro will take care of it you can put in 
on the first line of your macro, dismount. That will dismount if you're already on a mount. Then you do a weight one, and then you do mount raptor on the next line. This way, um, the system will try to dismount you first, and if you're not on a mount, it doesn't matter, it'll weight one and then mount you. If you already are on a mount, the same macro will first dismount you, it'll weight one and try to remount. That remount will not work because waiting one second is not enough between mount dismounts and mounts. So this way you can do the mount macro with one macro and you can hop on and off in the same macro. So now that you're level 20, now that you have your mount, you'll want to go into Kufim Island. Kufim Island is uh, right off of uh, Port Juno and you'll want to just kill whatever you can find there. Uh, early on there's going to be worms. You want to do worms and crabs, uh, the low 20s, uh, the mid 20s you can uh, go and kill some giants and then uh, and some pugils. And pretty much anything in there is killable um, with trusts out and the level that you are. So uh, make sure you call your trusts and then just level it up to level 30 or so. Once you get to level 30, uh, approximately, and maybe you want to go to 31 or 32 depending on what job you are and, and what your accuracy is looking like, then I, what I would recommend is going to Gearledge Citadel. Gearledge Citadel uh, is on the south end of south west end of Sormo campaign and once you're inside make sure you grab the the survival guide and then also grab the uh, grounds of valor page i think it's page one maybe page three but whatever it shows boar beetles and siege bats then you want to kill the appropriate amounts and you just uh, kill those boar beetles and siege bats making sure not to fall in the holes and to level about level 40. Now, while you're in here doing this, while you're in here running around fighting stuff, take a look on the uh, screen here and uh, you'll want to go to this particular spot and get the pouch of weighted stones. That will allow you to get past the banishing gate solo and not have to use any friends to help you to get through it. While you're in there, while you're leveling, take a look at here on the guide, uh, take, take a look here on the screen and you'll see the spot where you need to click to get uh, to get the geomagnetron. Um, to attune your geomagnetron to whatever whatever the dialogue is. This basically is the next step for your nation's uh, your Seekers of Adeline quest line. Uh, once you have that while you're in here, then you're basically almost have access to to the expansion pack. You'll basically have access with one more uh, dialogue uh, to the Seekers of Adeline expansion pack. So about level 30 is where you might want to start doing your nation quests, um, quests uh, mission 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Um, at level 30 you can easily beat the, uh, the boss at the end of mission 2, 3. And once you are done with that, you are, you'll be able to proceed with the next step of the process of Rhapsodies of Vanadil in Norg. And Finishing those cutscenes and being past being rank 3 in your nations will allow you to obtain a key item which will give you XP bonuses and uh, item bonuses from a curio vendor Moogle. This XP bonus is huge. It'll help you leveling for sure uh, and, and speeding up the process. So at level 30 or so, maybe I'd recommend doing that and getting that key item from the Rep Rhapsodies of Vanity missions. So once you get to level 50, you're going to want to decide if this is going to be your main job or your sub job. If it's your sub job, then maybe start leveling your, your main job from one to level 50. And then now you'll be all ready to go and no need to level your sub job anymore. And at level 50, you'll be able to fight and kill the monster for the next Rhapsodies of Vanadil missions, which is in Kufim. He's probably killable in the mid 40s, but he's a little harder. It's, it's even a little bit of a challenge at level 50. But once you do get to level 50, you'll have uh, you'll be able to get that next step in the Rhapsodies of Vanadil missions and get the next key item and get your XP bonus that way. Also, now that you're level 50 and you're maybe even 50.999 and you're capped out, this is be the time where I would recommend going and doing your first limit break quest. At level 50, you'll want to go to um, uh, Relude Gardens and go see Matt and all the way in the back of Relude Gardens. He will tell you to go to um, three different zones and get a couple items for him. So um, follow along the guide in BG Wiki, bg-wiki.com, and you will see uh, how to get all those items for free without uh, fighting anything, or you can just fight the monsters and try to get the drops, but you'll see. Also, my extended guide goes through details of, of 
recommended ways to get all that. Once you have those items and you're capped at level 50, bring them back to Matt, you'll be able to finish the quest and then suddenly you'll be able to become level 55. Then use that Records of Eminence quest uh, limit break, uh, the first limit break quest for Records of Eminence to activate that and push yourself over 50 onto 51. Then you'll immediately be able to access the level 51 quest, which will cap you at level 60. Once, you're, once you have that quest active, you need to get three items from Zarkabard. Now, super, now it's super easy just to go back to your home nation, go to your Unity Warp NPC, and go warp right to Zarkabard. And then once you're there, hop on your Chocobo, go to all three of those spots. If you look at a guide, um, either watch my guide or uh, look at BG Wiki and where those spots are, grab all three of them, warp back to Matt, and then you can immediately, when you're still at 51, you'll immediately be able to uh, extend your cap to 60. So now, once you uh, go back and decide to level your main job, you start out, start out at 1, and then you have a free clear path all the way to 60.999. Okay, so now that you're level, about level 60, maybe 55-ish or so, um, it is a good time to go and proceed with more missions. Now, you... If you're following this guide precisely, then maybe you're at mission uh, mission three on in, in your nation quest. You'll need to do mission uh, three one and three three, I believe, and it'll take you around the world, and you'll you'll just go and finish those missions. But once you get to rank four, there's going to be uh, basically rank four is just one mission, but it requires you to go all around the world and do some you'll be doing doing some legwork and. But the convenient thing is, the next Limit Break quest also requires the same requirements for those Rank 4 quests. So, I would recommend taking care of those um, prerequisites and doing the Limit Break quest simultaneously to the Rank 4 missions, because they're in the same zones and require the same, they require the same items to get to. So, once you are in those zones, you're going to want to keep in mind that those particular um, high-level monsters in that zone, and if you are level 60 or so, you should be able to take out those monsters that drop items for your level 75 cap quest. So once you hit level 70, you will uh, need to gather up a testimony for your particular job. So what you see here on the screen is a list of the uh, job testimony options for each of the zones. So make sure when you're in each of those zones, you go and find a testimony for, those, for that particular job you're on. Bido has Dark Knight, Red Mage, White Mage, Warrior, Paladin, Thief, and Black Mage. Now the Thief, uh, you have to actually steal from the Thief um, monster. And take a look at BG Wiki for uh, which monster you're looking for. Devoy has Ranger, Monk, Warrior, Dragoon, Paladin. Castle Oz Troja has Monk, Bard, Ninja, Black Mage, and Sam. I know for a fact that the Monk ones drop easier in the Castle Oz Troja than they do in Devoy. Um, and also when it comes to Samurai, there is only one special, high-level, notorious monster that drops the Sam Testimony, and that is in like the deep, um, deep back part, back basement part of the zone, and it's only one monster, and he might not even be up. So if you're on Samurai, you're kind of out of luck in so far as going and finding and getting a testimony from these three places. If you're Samurai, you'll have to go to Castle Zaval and find the particular demons that drop Samurai Testimonies, and they're a little bit harder to find. So Samurai, is, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage if you're playing Samurai and want to get your testimony. But it is what it is. And that's why it may be a wise idea to stop at 60.1 or so, because you might need to kill a bunch of stuff to to get your, uh, your testimony for your job. So maybe leveling up to 60.99 will be a little bit of a waste of time. Just go to 60 kill some things, uh, and you're probably, if you're lucky, you'll get one on the first drop, but if you have to kill a several of them, you might cap out your XP anyway. So once you are done with the rank four missions and the limit break mission uh, for all of these zones, go back to Relude Gardens, complete your um, nation missions and get to rank five, and also complete your, um, complete your limit break mission with Matt, and then you can immediately push yourself again, once again, with the Records of Eminence, push yourself over level 60, and get to level 61, and immediately do the quest that gives you access to level 70 cap. 
And that one's super easy. That one, the next one there is just trading four kindred seals to um, particular NPCs around the world. And you'll just have to go onto bgwiki.com and, and uh, it'll tell you in the quest uh, log um, what um, description of each of those NPCs and you just have to go find them online. It'll be easier to do it that way. Just go find them online and you'll see which NPCs to go to and trade kindred seals. So you'll need four kindred seals for sure at that point. So now you are rank five and you are um, capped at uh, level 70. I would necessar wouldn't necessarily um, go and level up to 70. If you can, if you want, but um, you don't really necessarily need to. Might as well, I would recommend, might as well uh, go ahead and proceed with all of your rank five missions, which is two missions fairly easy. Remember your unity warps when you go to warp to the areas you need to go to. Check out my thorough guide for how to get around and, uh, and where to go for all those and recommendations for that and how to do those fights. I'm not here to try to spoil, on, spoil you on the story. So once you get to rank six, you'll be good to go for nation missions. No, no more of those that you'll need, but you will now be able to access the last and, uh, the final part of this guide for the records Rhapsodies of Vanadil. So you'll want to go to Norg, continue on with that quest line, and there's going to be another monster you have to fight after a few quests. Now this particular monster you probably won't be able to kill it by yourself at this level. You could wait until you're 70 to go kill it, or you could try and ask for help from somebody uh, at level 61. And this particular fight is technically beatable at level 61 i think but this np this uh monster will charm you and if they charm you you basically lose the fight so you'll want to bring in a high level friend if you have a, a friend in your link shell that was willing to help and take five minutes out of their day to help you kill this uh to kill this monster they're probably willing to do that for several of the characters that i've leveled i've just done a shout in town and then somebody within Within a few minutes, I will get several tells saying, yeah, I'll help, I'll help. It's, a five, it's a kind of a fun five minute fight. They just go in, call their NPCs, call their trusts, and they go and kill it for you. And that's it. They just feel good about themselves. And then and you can proceed and get the, uh, the final, at least the final for this guide, the final XP bonus uh, key item for the Rhapsodies of Vanadil. So at this point, you're either level 61 or level 70. And once you get to 66, at least 66, you can go and uh, take on the, the next Limit Break quest, which is the one that you will need to turn in your testimony for. Just go to Matt and um, he'll tell you to bring the speci specific testimony uh, to a certain area. And then you trade the testimony to that area, you go into the fight, you win, because this way, um, because these days, one of the bonuses of getting the Rhapsodies of Vandal missions is not only extra trust that you can call, but also the ability to bring in your trust for this fight. Otherwise, this would be a very tough fight. So once you go in the fight and win, you'll be level 75 cap, and then you can level up to 75. Uh, there is no other, there is no limit break quest at 71. You do have to get to level 75 to proceed further. Once you get to level 75, you'll want to talk to the Nomad Moogle next to Matt. He will unlock your merit points system. These merit points are basically a way to upgrade your character beyond level 75 strength, but you don't necessarily need to like upgrade all these skills um, for merit points, but you do need to accumulate them. You'll eventually need to accumulate 22 merit points. And what I would recommend is staying, like starting to accumulate those merit points at level 75 and staying capped at level 75, where the XP is good and where you uh, go and uh, at this point, you'll be at the, um, at least at least for my guide, you'll be at the flower pots things and the gooboos and the, and the flies and just get your 22 merits that way. So you'll need 22 merits and it's several different items. You'll need to go to, if you don't have them already, you need to go to your login Moogle, which is the greeter Moogle. You'll need uh, five kindred seals, 16 kindred crests, and 22 merits, like I said, but also while you're there, you might want to pick up about five seasoning stones. These are all like level, uh, the first, uh, first tier, like 10 point, 10 login point items. Um, five kindred seals, if you don't already have them, 16 kindred crests, 
22 merit points you'll, you'll be accumulating once you uh, get to level 75. And also, I would recommend also buying five seasoning stones, four fossilized bones, and four fossilized fangs. Those will be used later on, and I'll explain why later. Once you have your 22 merits and all the uh, kindred seals and kindred crests that you need, you can uh, talk to that nomad Moogle and get access to level 80 cap. Just uh, all, you, all it'll do is uh, it'll take uh, three of the merits and then a few of those uh, and the five kindred seals and then you'll automatically be level um, level 80 cap then once again you'll want to push yourself over level 75 into level 76 and then you can immediately do your level 85 cap quest which is just going to require more merits and then the items you already gathered so then you'll be level 85 cap then you can uh, level up to level 85.999 on those same um, plants and gubus and uh, flies if you want, or if the XP is getting a little bit slow toward the end, you can finally go ahead and uh, finish your Adeline access quest and then go to Adeline and uh, start killing the Mandragoras outside of Adeline in Cezak Battlegrounds. I'd, re I'd recommend going there, I mean mid 80s, 82, 83 is doable if you're on a mage character and don't have to worry about your, your own accuracy. If you're a melee character and your accuracy is not capped out, I would say maybe wait till about 85. But once you're 85.999, you will then have to go back to Matt and then do your limit break quest for level 90. That particular level 90 cap quest is going to require a low level mini game or mini quest type item. Um, it could be an item that you did way back in the day and you still have the item because you haven't been able to use it for anything. It, it could be an item that you could buy from the auction house. Or maybe it's an item you already have. Maybe you have to go do it. It's just kind of random. Whatever you get, you get. Look up on BG Wiki on how to obtain that item. I happen to already have the item, so that was quick for me. I just, I just got the item out of my inventory, traded it with the appropriate uh, kindred crests and merits, and then I was able to access uh, level 90. Then, what you can do once you're a level 90 cap, once again, uh, bump yourself over 85 into 86, and then you can do the level cap quest immediately for level 95. That one requires some, some same supplies that you already have, that you already picked up, and it is another mini, mini game. It's basically a paper, rock, scissors game between Matt and Degenhard. Um, Degenhard, however you say it. Um, Matt and Degenhardt have basically play a game of uh, uh, paper, rock, scissors, and you just have to win uh, a certain number of points before he wins a certain number of points. You're playing from the perspective as Matt, so you basically need to have Matt win five points. And that's basically all there is to that. It just uh, it takes a little luck. You know, you could be doing it for a while, you could do it on the first time, it just takes a little luck. Then you will be able to get to level 95. Now, the last part. The last upgrade to level 99 is where you'll need those seasoning stones, fossilized bones, and fossilized fangs. Once you get to level 91, you'll be able to access this fight. And you'll need to trade a seasoning stone to the Nomad Moogle, and he will give you a key item that allows you to ac access the last fight. Now, you could go in there right now and access the last fight and bring your NPCs in there and do the fight. You don't have to turn in those other items, but it's going to be very, very hard to do it, especially at level 91. However, you could wait till you're level 95 and do it, and you might have an easier time, but even then, it could be tough. What I would really recommend is going to Bastok Markets and finding Deacon Hard. He will say, I have a special item that I can give you to trade that will help you with this with this fight, with this, uh, this level 99 cap fight. All he needs is a Seasoning Stone, Fossilized Bone, and Fossilized Fang. Now, you can get multiples of, of those items. At level 91, I would really recommend getting about four of them. Basically, this item will terrorize the uh, terrorize the boss that you're fighting, so it doesn't move, doesn't attack, and also takes a lot more damage. So, But it only lasts for a certain amount of time. I think like a minute, a minute or two maybe. Um, at level 91, on my last character, I was Black Mage at level 91, and I took out about... 25% of his health for each one of those uses. So that's why I say four is a good amount to take in. Um, you don't have to take in any. Maybe you're awesome at this game and you can do a bunch of damage and take them out. But 
In that particular that particular quest, I required three of those items, um, but maybe just bring four just in case. So once you're done with that fight, you'll be able to get to 99, and then you'll be done. Once you're at 99, you can start doing a mantra, you can start doing endgame stuff. Whatever your purpose was for leveling this character to 99, you can start doing. Um, please like this video if it was good information. Please let me know. Don't dislike. But maybe let me know in the comments if there's anything you didn't like about it. Um, please subscribe. I'm trying to make something out of this YouTube channel, and I just hit 200 subscribers today, which is big for me. Um, hopefully, at some point, I get to a thousand. Maybe make some extra cash. And that anything you can do, comment, subscribe, like the video. It helps with the algorithm. Pushes me toward that goal. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.